Hey, 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 good Saturday morning. Say good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> we are up and moving on this beautiful Saturday. Well, overcast Saturday. Um, Doug has school today. He is zooming in. It's a double session. So he'll do what he can do. Um, I told him if he gets tired or anything, just tap out. Um, he actually <laughs> fell asleep the other night yeah. during school. Um, he usually sits up in our bed and watches it and you know, he's tired. He's still recovering from a nine hour surgery under anesthesia for that long. It's going to take you time to recover. Um, so yeah, but he's just going to zoom in, do what he can do. Today's the last day of the semester. Well, sort of the last day of the semester last day of classes they have a final on tuesday but he'll be taking that at home um i just think the drive down there he's not allowed to drive somebody would drive him but it's 40 minutes there 40 minutes back and the two hour final i just think it's going to be too much for him so he'll just take the final at home um what's going on update on laura you saw us soaking her in the other video still not right i, I don't know what to do for her we're pretty sure she's egg bound. We're doing everything we're supposed to do, but she's not getting any better. Um, so we're just kind of waiting on that. See what happens. What else is going on, Mr. Doug? What else are we? Uh, parties today. Yes, yeah, so we have a birthday party today for my little nephew, Alex. My great nephew, Alex. Yeah. And we have a party tomorrow for our great nephew, Marky. Alex is two. Marky is ten. They were both born on the same day. One's Doug's side of the family, one's my side of the family. So I think we're going to go and just make an appearance and say hello, get something to eat, and then see what this guy can do. And see how I feel. See how he feels, but we'll probably go and just say hey. Yeah. That's our plan. Um, he's still thinking about church tomorrow. He really wants to go. Yeah. He's nervous about putting on clothes. Yeah. Like real clothes. Um, but we're going to work on that. Just because of where his incision is and his ostomy and stuff like that. Um, what else is going on? I am going to make cupcakes this morning. And that's for Andrew. Andrew has his 10-year 8th grade reunion today. Um, he graduated from a very small little Catholic school. Um, and this is their 10 year reunion. So there's, I think he graduated with like 24 kids. I don't know how many are coming to the reunion, but it's actually very local. It's just two blocks down at, at somebody's house. So that should be a lot of fun. So I'm gonna make um, half a dozen chocolate cupcakes and half a dozen vanilla cupcakes to take. Um, do that this morning. I'm gonna get breakfast started right now. I'm trying to get Doug eating breakfast just a little bit earlier while he's home so I can pace out his medication and his meals a little bit better. So we're working on that. Just a lot going on, a lot going on this weekend. Um, I gotta get out in the garden, gotta get out in the garden. Um, Doug wants to get out in the garden, so I will probably let him do that. He can, he can go out and pick, it's fine. Um, you know, we have his do's and don'ts and they said garden away, so. Um, yeah, that's it. But for right now, I need to go get baking going. I was going to do it out on the Blackstone, but it is really cloudy and looks very om ominous out there. And I'm afraid the minute I get started, the skies are going to open up. So I'm going to just make the bacon in here. I was curious when I broke this egg. Double yoker right there. I thought so. Okay, we were like a short order cook this morning. <laughs> Doug had a cheese omelet. Andrew had scrambled eggs and I'm having over easy eggs. I had a few potatoes left from the dinner that someone sent us the other night. So I just threw those in a pan, warmed them up and threw the eggs on top of it. I'm also having bacon and an English muffin. This will hold me all day until we get to the party later this afternoon. And this is how we're doing school nowadays. <laughs> He's got the iPad set up, he's got his books, his phone, and of course, Aria at his feet. I'm gonna go make some cupcakes. Okay, we are going to start first on the chocolate cupcakes. I have the oven preheating to 350, and in my bowl I have one cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup of cocoa powder, 
three quarter teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and one cup of sugar. We're gonna whisk this together until it is well combined. I probably should have sipped it, the cocoa powder, but it'll be okay. Okay, we're gonna just set this aside once it is all well combined. We're gonna get out another bowl. And in this bowl, we're gonna add a quarter cup of avocado oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you want. The original recipe calls for vegetable oil, but we don't use that, so I'm using avocado oil. Then we're going to use one egg at room temperature. We're gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're gonna add a half a cup of buttermilk. I did not have buttermilk, so I took a half a cup of milk and I added some vinegar to it. And voila, you have some faux buttermilk. You also want this at room temperature. Okay, we're gonna add that in. And then we are going to whisk this together until the egg is completely mixed in. You don't want to see any pieces of egg. You want it completely whisked in. We're going to get our dry ingredients back. We're going to make a well in the center. And we're gonna pour in our wet ingredients. We're going to mix this in until it's about 60 or 70% combined. Like that. And then we are going to add in one third cup of brewed coffee. Now, you know I do not like coffee. You cannot taste the coffee in these cupcakes. The coffee just brings out the chocolate flavor and makes it super, super moist. And then you want to whisk it until it is smooth. Once you're happy with it, we can start filling our cupcake tins. Okay, the next step is filling our cup. Whoa, sorry. I am not loving my new tripod here. It's very hard to move. The next step is filling our cupcake liners. You only want to fill them halfway. A lot of recipe calls for two thirds or even three quarters. This specifically says only halfway. So that is what we are going to do. We are gonna fill them halfway. I'm making a hot mess. Of course I'm making a hot mess. It wouldn't be me if I wasn't. batter is very liquidy, very runny, and that's okay. We'll go back and clean up this pan a little bit before we bake them. This is my large cookie scoop. I'm doing one level scoop.
We're going to start with that. We're going to clean off some of the pan. Just so that it doesn't cook on. Looks like we're going to probably get about 18 cupcakes out of this. The recipe actually says in one spot that you get 18 and then the other spot it says 12. So I'm really not sure which is right, but I'm thinking 18. We are going to, yeah, it says we should end up with 11 or 12 cupcakes in the one spot. The other spot it says a little bit more. So I don't know. I guess I should have read the recipe better. This is a new recipe for me. I normally use my own chocolate cake recipe, but this was very similar to it and it got amazing reviews. So I thought, why not try it? Just put a little tiny bit more in some of these. And then we're gonna get them in the oven for 16 to 20 minutes. I always start with the least amount of time because you can increase it, but you can't take it back. So we're gonna pop these in for 16 minutes and see where we're at after that. Okay, while the chocolate cupcakes are baking, we're gonna start on the vanilla ones. So in my bowl, I have one and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I have one cup of granulated sugar, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt. We're just gonna mix that together. And this recipe is a little different than the chocolate one. We don't have to mix the wet ingredients in a separate bowl, we just add them right in here. We're gonna mix in a half a cup of milk that's at room temp. And then we're gonna do a quarter cup of avocado oil. We're gonna do two tablespoons of sour cream, give or take. in our egg and we're going to add in a tablespoon of vanilla. We'll actually measure it this time. We want to mix this together but you don't want to over mix. That can make your cupcakes tough. I'm gonna switch over to a spatula just so I can make sure it's all off the bottom and mixed well. Looking good. Smells delicious. Okay. Now we are going to fill our muffin liners. With this one, it is three quarters full. So every, every recipe is a little bit different. So let's get that set up. Okay, chocolate cupcakes are out. I think I would have gone a little bit more than halfway, honestly, because um, I think they're a little flat, but I'm sure they're gonna taste delicious. So I'm gonna take these out of the, I'm gonna let these cool for five minutes, then put them to a cooling rack, and we're gonna get our vanilla cupcakes in the oven. Uh, well, so we only got 11 out of this one, but that's okay, it'll be fine. We're gonna get these in the oven, um, same thing at 350 for about 20 minutes. 
I think I'm gonna set the timer for 16 and check them at 16. Vanilla cupcakes are out and look beautiful. I am gonna let these cool. Go take care of Doug. He just got out of the shower, so I need to do all the things. And then we're gonna come back when these are cool. We're gonna make the frosting and get all these frosted and packaged up, ready to go. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is get started on our chocolate buttercream. I think I'm gonna do half the chocolate in chocolate and half the vanilla in chocolate and do half the chocolate in vanilla and half the vanilla in vanilla. Does that make sense? <laughs> Does that make sense? Anyway, uh, we're starting with one cup of butter. Now it calls for unsalted butter. I don't have that. I just don't add the salt to the recipe. We are going to just beat this until it's light and fluffy. So I'm gonna leave it go for quite a while. Okay, I let it go for quite a while until it was light and fluffy. And now I'm gonna add in about two cups of my powdered sugar. I am going to just take a little bit of time and just run it through the sieve because um, it's a little bit, a little bit lumpy. I just want my icing to be nice and smooth, my frosting. just got the sifter out. I don't know why I didn't. It's quicker and easier, but that's okay. Okay, and then we're going to add in sixty-eight grams or three quarters of a cup of cocoa. two teaspoons of vanilla. And then we're gonna add in about a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. I don't really worry about measuring it. I know that's not a measuring spoon, but it works. I am going to just stir this a little bit, just so it doesn't go crazy. until it starts incorporating because we still have more powdered sugar to add in and we have more heavy cream to add in until we get a really nice frosting consistency. I like to take my time and get it really, really well combined, really fluffy and really smooth. Okay, I added the rest of the powdered sugar and I'm gonna let this go. I'm gonna add a little more, whoa, not that much. I didn't mean to add. Now we're just gonna let this beat and beat and beat until it's nice and fluffy and the consistency I want. If you want it stiffer, add a little more sugar. If you want it looser, add a little more cream or milk. But I want it nice and fluffy. 
Okay, our icing is done. It is nice and light and fluffy. So we are just gonna get it into our piping bag. You can just slap it on with a knife, but since these are going out somewhere, I'm going to pipe it. Okay. Okay. Let's get that started. Let's get these frosted. So when I frost cupcakes, I don't like to do the big ice cream swirl on top because to me it's too much icing. So I just, let me see if I can show you this here. I pipe a squirt in the middle, then I go around in a circle and just kind of finish it off. So that is how I do it. Of course you do it any way you please. Sometimes I get a little heavy handed and put a little bit more on because, well, you know, it's icing. <laughs> but I think this makes it look very pretty and it's actually very easy. And then you can actually put some jimmies on there, some sanding sugar, whatever you want to really dress it up if you like to do that. So I think I'm going to do half of these with chocolate icing and then we're going to do half of them with vanilla icing. What do we have here? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. One, two, three, four, five. So I have six so far that I've done. So we're going to do one more and then we're going to save it for Save the icing for the vanilla ones. Not quite sure if they are cooled down yet. Okay, next up is the vanilla frosting. Starting off the same way, except this time I'm using the paddle because this recipe specifically says the paddle. I have one cup of softened butter in there and I'm just going to beat it for five minutes until it's light and pale and creamy and fluffy. Okay, now we are going to add in two and a half cups of powdered sugar. And once again, I'm gonna sift it just because I think you get a nicer result. We're going to add in about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. I will link both of the, all these recipes down in the description box. They are not on my website. They are not my recipes, but I will link them. And we're going to start combining this slowly 
And while we're doing that, we're gonna drizzle in about two tablespoons of heavy cream. You can also use milk or half and half. And once again, you make it the consistency that you are happy with. This is not a really super white frosting because I did use um, Kerrygold butter. And we know that that is very, very yellow. I probably, I didn't have anything but. Generally, I just use like some kind of like Land O'Lakes or Walmart brand or something because it's much whiter it's not grass fed but I didn't have it so I didn't use it so we're gonna let that go until we get the consistency we want and once again same thing you can add more sugar you can add more cream whatever it is however you get the consistency that you like okay it is perfect for what I want and I will say I did taste it I think this is the best vanilla buttercream I've ever made. So kudos to this recipe. It is really, really good. It's sweet, but not overly sweet. Definitely a winner. Okay, we are going to finish up with the chocolate and then wash out the tip and start on the vanilla. I only have one of the tips that I like to use. I forget what it is. It's that I'll I'll put it on the screen. Um, so I have to finish up this on the vanilla cupcakes, and then wash it out and get the vanilla in there. I am making a huge mess too. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the vanilla cupcakes. And since I only have eleven of those, I'm gonna do six chocolate and five vanilla. Now, because I choose not to do the big ice cream swirl, I do have um, some icing left over. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't wanna to have to fill this anymore. Okay, not the prettiest. That one's not the prettiest, but it'll do. Okay, Joni, stop messing with it. It'll do. Okay, um, I do have about half a cup of icing left over. I'm just gonna freeze that, and then when I have a small batch, I'll be able to use it. So there are our vanilla with chocolate. Now we're gonna get everything cleaned up and switch over to vanilla frosting. Uh-oh. We've got a broken bag. Got to switch gears here. Okay, we are back in business. Just a quick bag change and there we go. There you have it. <sighs> it is hot. We are home from the birthday party. It was hot, but it was good. It was cute. 
two-year-olds are adorable. So I am just gonna straighten up the kitchen a little because it's a little bit messy. I'm gonna get changed out of my dress and put on, I think I might put on like shorty pajamas because we're not going anywhere and it's only us here. I'm gonna send Adam out to check eggs. That's new to me. And we're gonna watch the game. So I'll be back if we do anything else. So it's pretty late, it's uh, 8.30 and it's finally a decent temperature so this guy decided to come out and play in his garden he's been missing it so bad we had the chickens out running around for a while but they're all getting ready for bed they went in on their own yeah so he decided to come out here and do a little bit of picking it's what makes him happy Okay, we are home from church. It is now Sunday morning. So last night we just ended up watching the Phillies game and then watching the um, UFC fights. Got up on church this morning. We all went together. Stopped at the road stand to get corn because I am going to be making a corn mozzarella tomato basil salad to take to our nephew's birthday party today. So I've already got the water on for that. I've got bacon thawing because I forgot to take it out last night. The guys want bacon again this morning. So we're moving. I'm gonna go get changed, get out of my dress, just throw on some work clothes and then I'll get changed when we go to the party. But I just wanna get that done. I'm gonna cut up a watermelon to take to the party. We bought a beautiful Jersey cantaloupe at the road stand. I'm gonna cut that up to have with breakfast. Adam's doing the chicken chores. Andrew's doing a, um, some stuff for his work. Doug's getting changed. And we're going to move on with this day. I will bring you along when I make the salad. I think you've seen me make it before. I think I have a whole video on it. But we'll do it again. Because let me tell you, if you have to take a side dish somewhere in the summer, this is the side dish to take. Everyone loves it. I feel bad Doug can't eat it because it's corn. But... Everybody else can. So I'll be back. We'll get breakfast and we'll get that salad. Time for our brunch. It is a all homegrown brunch. It is our chicken eggs, our peppers and tomatoes from the garden inside the omelet, our homemade bacon and my homemade sourdough English muffins. So I love that I can source all my food. I'm going to enjoy this, get that salad made and keep moving going okay first thing we're gonna do is get our corn ready so I cooked the corn for five minutes in boiling water and now I'm just gonna take it off the cob I just use a knife which needs to actually be sharpened I don't have any fancy gadgets or anything to do this we just use a knife once I get all the corn off we're gonna put it in a big bowl and start on the tomatoes and the chickens will totally enjoy this. Nice little treat for them today. That cantaloupe that I bought at the road stand, yeah, the chickens are eating that too because it was way over overripe. I could take it back, but I'll just give it to them. It was very mealy because it was so overripe and it's a shame because it was as sweet as could be. But, okay, I'm gonna go do all this corn, get it in my nice big bowl. And as you can see, it gets like this. So I just break it all apart because you don't want chunks, you want kernels. So we're just gonna get all that in there. We're gonna keep going with the corn and then when that gets done, we'll move on. Okay, I changed my mind. The chickens are not getting the corn cobs yet. They'll get them eventually, but not now because I am gonna start saving all of our corn cobs from now until I have enough and I'm gonna make a couple batches of corn cob jelly. Yes, I made it last year. It was a huge seller at my markets because it's so different. It tastes like honey. It is so delicious. So I'm just gonna, I just double bag these. I'm gonna throw them in the freezer and wait until I have another set of them and uh, start on the corn cob jelly in a couple weeks. Okay, I'm going to start chopping up the grape tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, whatever it is you want to use. Um, I think on the website I have like that you use like a dry pint. I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to do it until it looks good. 
there's really no right or wrong with this, to be honest with you. So we're just gonna chop up a bunch, put them in, stir them up, decide when we think it looks good. But if you're a measurer, use that dry pint as a measurement. Okay, so while we finish cutting up the tomatoes to throw into the corn, I just want to real quick um, tell you about something that happened with YouTube, not with me. So there is a channel I watch, and if you guys like homesteading channels and stuff like that, you probably watch it too. It's the Rose Homestead, not Red Rose, that's different. She's like the lady with a gadget or something. This is the Rose Homestead. Anyway, she's a pretty big channel but not huge, um, like under 100,000 subscribers. She's had her channel for years. She does some sponsored videos and works with some vendors and things. And recently, I'm gonna just give you a quick overview because I'm gonna link her video and let you go watch it. She explains it better. Anyway, recently, some hackers disguised as someone who wanted to uh, sponsor a video for her and she's not stupid. Like she's been in this a while. Everything checked out. The contracts checked out. Everything what looked very legit from when, you know, she has done this before. So she knows. Um, it was all done, agreed upon. The minute she like sent the contracts or hit send or whatever, all of a sudden her entire YouTube channel disappeared. It, it, it's crazy. It is crazy. You'll have to go watch her video. But anyway, YouTube has been zero help to her. And unfortunately, she, her channel, go, <coughs> excuse me, her channel is gone. Now, she has started another channel with the exact same name and all that. And I believe she has videos to upload onto the new channel, um, some of her old popular videos. But if you like cooking, homesteading um, channels, go check her out. Give her a subscribe. Give her a like. Give her some support because, like, this was her livelihood. And now she's pretty much starting back from scratch because she can't get monetized until she has a certain amount of watch hours and everything. And that just really kind of cements why... I don't do a lot of sponsored videos. There are some sponsors I will 100% work with. I will work with Four Jars. I will work with New Air um, and a couple others. But for the most part, I don't, I get emails every single solitary day asking me to do sponsored videos. And most of the time, they're not something that would relate to my channel. Um, to be honest with you. And honestly, I don't need their free stuff because you know I'm trying to be a minimalist, but I'm very, very careful about who and what I say yes to. And this just solidifies that. So I do very few sponsored videos and now I'm gonna probably do even less because of seeing this. Not that they would come after my little tiny channel, but you just don't know. People are crazy, crazy. Um, so I'm just going to be very, very selective about what I do and and who I, you know, allow access to my channel and things like that. So anyway, I'm going to link her channel below. It's the Rose Homestead. If you like that kind of content, please go give her a look-see, give her a shout out and help her get her identity and her life back. So, okay. Thank you. I am done this and now we're going to move on to the mozzarella cheese okay i have some of my fresh mozzarella you want to use like the fresh mozzarella i like to make my homemade but honestly i just did not have time to do it so we're using this and it's fine i'm just going to cut it into little squares um if you don't have the slice kind you can just use the i usually use like the big brown ball but this is what i had so this is what i'm using just cutting it up into little pieces and tossing it right in. This is a very, very simple ingredient recipe. Usually in the summertime, I have the ingredients or am able to source them locally and quickly. 
and I tell you, everybody loves it. So I'm just gonna keep going and doing this and then we'll add the basil and we'll be done. We'll make the dressing and we'll be done. Okay, I just ran out to the garden and picked a bunch of basil. I'm gonna get this washed up and we're gonna get it chopped up. Okay, I have all my basil washed up, all the leaves torn. Now I'm just chopping it very finely. I think I'll just do a couple more leaves. Okay, I think that is good. So now I'm just going to cover this and put it in the fridge. I don't like to put the dressing on it until about 15 minutes before we eat it. So I will just take the dressing in a little mason jar and right before we eat, I'll dump it on and stir it in. Okay, for the dressing, the first thing we need is a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. So I just cut a lemon in half. These lemons are ridiculous. Usually organic lemons are smaller. These are huge. But the rind is really, really thick if you can see that. Sometimes, depending, I do double this and not necessarily use all of it, but I don't know. It's, it's I just kind of use my, my eyes and decide. Um, not quite a quarter cup, so I'm going to get out another lemon and do another lemon. Or I could, instead of doing that, maybe I'll just take some, I have some pure organic lemon juice. I'll just throw some of that in there because I only needed another teaspoon or so. So I'm gonna put this in our mason jar. And then to that, we're gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. Then we're gonna add two cloves of minced garlic. We're just gonna crush this right into our jar. Okay. And then we need half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. There is our half a teaspoon of salt. I am using my red mints. You know, that's my favorite. And then I'm gonna add a little less than a half a teaspoon of black pepper, just cause I'm not a huge black pepper fan. We're gonna put the lid on. 
just gonna give it a shake and that's it. That's all there is to the dressing. And like I said, 15 minutes before we eat, I'll dump it on. You just, you don't want, you don't want the corn salad dripping in dressing. You know, you don't want that big pile at the bottom of the bowl. This just kind of brings out all the flavors, enhances the flavors a little bit. So that truly is enough. Sometimes I do make a little bit more, um, cause depending on how big your, your ears of corn are, depending on how many tomatoes you put in, it can change the amount of salad you have. So, but I think for today, this is gonna be perfect. Okay, got a watermelon cut up into wedges, triangle slices to take to the picnic with us. And this is just what's kind of left. I'm going to put a little bag next to the watermelon tray so everybody can put their rinds in it and I can bring them home for the chickens and then I'll add this to it. And then I had some blackberries and some strawberries that were getting ready to go south in the fridge. So I just put them on this tray. I'm going to flash freeze them, put them in bags, and we're going to use them for smoothies in the next week or so. So that's done. And now I have blueberries that before Doug went in the hospital, I flash froze that I need to get in bags. Here is the tray of blueberries that I froze. Um, I love to flash freeze them because then when I put them in bags, they don't mush together in one big conglomerate. So I'm just going to put them in freezer bags in two cup increments. So in the, um, Nothing is ever easy, never a dull moment, what the heck moment. That's where we're going. We're not going to the birthday party. No, the boys are there. Doug and I are heading to, where are we heading, Doug? The emergency room. We're heading to the ER. Yep, Doug's ostomy is bleeding. Um, I'm bleeding enough that we sent pictures to triage we also sent pictures to our friend who's the nurse, um, the, the nurse manager there. And they're like, yeah, you need to go to the ER. Yeah, so that is where we are heading. Um, it's probably going to be a very long day, night, whatever. I packed a bag. I packed an overnight bag because I just don't know. Um, prepare for the worst, hope for the best type scenario certainly not how I expected my weekend to go <sighs> but here we are so I'll let you know what happens so it looks like we're going to be guests of Hotel Cooper again. again we're waiting for the surgical team to come in but it's not looking good um, there's a lot of blood so yeah just waiting they drew labs, um, started IVs, you know, put IVs in. He's NPO. They did a type and cross. To me, that sounds like surgeries on the horizon. I don't know. I, I just don't know. So does this look familiar? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so we are back on the pavilion floor. This time we're in kind of, we're not in an intermediate room. Like there's no telemetry or anything like that. They just come in to take his vitals. He's not constantly monitored. So far, knock wood, what they did in the ER seems to be working. There has there is no blood. So the stitch seems to be, I don't know. We're just hoping that that is what it was and there's nothing internal and all that good stuff. And we're hoping to get the heck out of here tomorrow. So just like I did last week, I am spending the night. Um, I spent the whole week last week with him, not leaving. He needs an advocate and that would be me. Right? Right. <laughs> did you admit yet that you need me here? Uh, so usually. <laughs> so unfortunately in this room, there's not a pull out bed. So that will be my bed tonight. Luckily, I, I was smart and I packed, I packed to stay. So I have uh, some things. Hopefully we'll be home tomorrow, but that'll be it for tonight. I will keep you updated tomorrow. Good morning. 
We had a decent night. We both actually slept. That was good. They were in a couple times and two groups of surgeons have already been in this morning. 99% sure they're letting him go home later today. So that is awesome. They took his staples out. That was not pleasant. They left some of them in. There's one spot that's not healing great. Um, so they left those staples in and they also had to repack the incision, which was not pleasant. So, yeah. Um, they lifted his NPO order, so he's going to call down and get some breakfast, and yeah, we're just kind of waiting around. I think we're going to see the ostomy nurse, and I think we're going to see the surgeon's APN, so I'm hoping to be out of here ASAP. We'll see what happens, but that's what's going on. I had big plans for filming today. I had a whole list of stuff I needed to get done at home and I was just gonna take you through my entire day from start to finish every little thing. That blew up in my face now, didn't it? Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> but anyway, I'll be back with an update. So in true Stetzer fashion, not sure if you can hear that, but we were out for our walk and we walk and we walk in circles. And do you hear that? So we had to go back to our room. They've shut off all the doors um, and like sectioned everybody off. And yeah, there's a code red alert. There's a fire alarm in the building. Stand by. Seriously, I can't make this crap up. Guess what? Going home. Busting out. <laughs> so excited, yes. They just took the rest of the staples out and it's angry looking. Yeah. It's angry looking. Changed everything and so we are waiting for the discharge papers. It is almost four o'clock. <laughs> so anxious to get home. Yeah. Very anxious to get home. And hopefully we will stay away from here until we have to come back in August. Hear me? Six weeks. <clears throat> Six weeks. Hear me? Six weeks. We're staying out of here. Six weeks. We're staying out of here. Yes. We're staying out of here. <laughs> well, we are home. I just got out of the shower. That felt good. Um, that's it for the weekend. I had so much planned. It didn't go very well, did it? No. No. But that's okay. Moving on. Moving on. Somebody said to me, Oh my gosh, you guys have been through so much and blah, blah, blah. We have, but honestly, if not us, who? You know, we we were talking to somebody and we said, what if this was a single mother with young children going through this and didn't have, you know, someone to watch her kids or whatever? And Or what if this was an elderly person that did not have um, an advocate, did not have support and... You know, we've got the best tribe around. I mean, we are just surrounded by an amazing village. So we can shoulder the burden. We can shoulder it better than some people could. So if not us, who? We'll get through it. Be some bumps along the way, <laughs> but we'll get through it. I told them, please no more visits to Hotel Cooper until August, please. But anyway, so that's it. Tomorrow we're gonna try to get back to normal, a new normal. I have so much I need to do. So much I need to do. So anyway, my friends, that is it. I will see you all in my next video.